and welcome to We're Podding This Together, the podcast where we guide you through your favorite, or not so favorite, Disney Channel original movies. Thanks for listening. I'm Sammy. I'm Lori. I'm Brandon. There's a time when we all choose to either quit or follow through. This is that time. We're watching The Cheetah Girls. I... Wait, is that what it's mm. called? Or no, The Cheetah Sisters. <laughs> What's it Cheetah called? Girls, <laughs> correct. You had it right the first time. <laughs> We're watching that one. If I have to lip sync this podcast, I'm walking. We're podding around the world. Maybe we should just lip sync this podcast. I think it would be an improvement. Oh, I need the movie summary. We do need Josh, don't we? Fourteen girls come together and they're either in college or high school. I don't know. (laughs) It's very unclear. Fourteen girls aim to take the world by storm with their music. God, this movie cover is really bad. When you when you said that, it sounded like you were saying 14 girls. That's what four, I thought, too. 14 <laughs> girls. <laughs> so had you guys seen this movie before? Nope. Yes. I actually knew most of these songs. It was very weird. I, I remembered a lot more than I thought I would. Have you seen it, Sammy? I'm sure you have. Uh, yes. And I loved it when I was a preteen child. I was, like, right right in the correct uh, age group for this. And I loved all the songs, and I still love all the songs. I still think Cinderella is an excellent song. I'll stand by it. The music in this movie wasn't actually that bad. It was What funny. I really liked is one of the big plot points was that they were like, we're not going to lip sync. But, like, clearly every song in this was very heavily lip synced, which was oh, very yeah. funny very to much, me. Yeah. It was the worst lip sync Okay, Sammy, before we recorded, you sent us one song. I didn't get a chance to listen to it. I apologize. But what, which which Cheeto sang the sex song? Aqua. Aqua, the uh, the southern from okay. Texas. I was just looking up to see what the other ones had gotten up to, and Adrienne Houghton, the one who is, like, the Latina, she, um, the last two things she have been, has been in was I'm in Love with the Church Girl, and Adriana, Sexy People, the F-I-A-T song. Mm-hmm. So I still think um, Spectacular by, what's her name, Keely Williams or something like that? Am I making that up? That song is horrifying. No. But she, in an excellent way. That, no. I, ugh. ugh. <laughs> I don't want to, like, talk bad, but I, mm, I don't, I can't find her pretty after that song. I, No. I'm going to tell everybody, do not follow her career if you ever want to watch this movie again, because I watched her little video and listened to her little promiscuous song before I watched this, and it was so hard to watch. Okay, well, now I have to. I was originally just going to not, because I don't care that much, but if it makes, like, Brandon... What's it called when, like, old church ladies get, get like, oh, my. Oh, my. Grasping at your pearls? Something Uh, like that. that? Clutching your pearls? That's it. I think it's I called think... getting a pearl necklace. I feel like that's not... <laughs> I got a pearl necklace um, all over her. How many pearl necklaces have you gotten, Brie? Apparently there's one. Okay, this is, is there a video for it? Spectacular? Um, I don't yeah. believe so. I think it's just oh, like so it's a just lyric the song? video. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's what it is oh it's definitely a very creepy song i kind of love it Anyway, moving on. Yeah, let's get to... So this movie started with, like, an opening musical number, uh, dancing and singing and all of the shebang at, like, it looked like a child's birthday party. I felt like they were hired for, like, a cheap birthday party. I think it was supposed to let us know that they were, like, a very amateur group of girls performing where they could, and they were trying to get that hustle and get them gigs. I think that one boy looked like um, Chanel's little brother. Oh, uh, that so would maybe make it was sense. His birthday, or like one of one of his kids' birthdays. There was a lot going on with this movie, with like the foster kids storyline. And what was weird to me was like, so throughout the course of the movie, 
we get backstory on everybody except the southern girl. I have a theory on that. I have a theory that she was a really bad actress. And so they cut her out of as much of the movie as they could. Because the whole time I was focusing on her because I had heard her song. And, <laughs> and I was like, when she comes up, I'm really paying attention. And I was like, I know I started to notice she wasn't in as much of the movie. So I think they cut her out. I didn't listen to the song. And I noticed most of her character was her standing in doorways going, ah, ah, Yeah. Ah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also getting in, in people's faces. She was really good at getting into intensely into people's faces for very yeah. little like provocation like it wasn't yeah sometimes it was deserved other times it was not one person's name is drinka Dr- drinka like drink a pop yeah we got okay we got galleria was raven wait okay it says galleria as raven i don't understand why that's I don't on either. IMDb. oh it's probably she was it's probably she was listed as raven instead of like raven simone yeah, okay, you're right, because then Adrian Hewton is Chanel as Adrian Balon. And then we have Aqua, Dorinda, except they called Dorinda Doe, which was dumb. Mm-hmm. We have Dorothea, Drinka, Franca Cabolo. It's like Jackal. And then Derek. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anybody's name in this except for Aqua, because, I mean, that's a unique name. I'm surprised nobody was named Unique. Okay, wait, the director of this... No, just kidding. The director of the second one was the same guy who directed um, High School Musical. Ooh, he got better. Well, the the second Cheetah Girls, not this one. Oh, well, he got good. Because High School Musical (laughs) is way better than the second one of this, I guarantee it. So after their party, uh, one of the girls, I think it was Aqua, got her heel stuck in like a, a crack and... All of the little kids were laughing at them, and they felt like they were failures as artists. Although, I feel like that's just a simple mistake that anybody could make, getting your heel cut in a crack, and shouldn't reflect, yeah. reflect poorly on your professionalism. Yeah, I mean, that happens all the time to me. And, like, people laugh, and they joke about it, but I'm like, I'm fierce, still. No? <laughs> Does that not happen to you daily? I think the only thing, the closest thing that's happened with this is I, most of my heels are like kind of stiletto-y and I never plan properly. So if I have to like walk through grass or something, the bat can sink into the, so I went to a funeral oh, mm-hmm. in which you have to stand on the grass for a long amount of time. So I had to like, just kind of lean forward on angle for the whole service. Otherwise you just start to fall backwards a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You slowly that. sink in your heels. Yeah. It's not great. That's why most of the time I just wear wedges. So basically Raven's first real scene where we meet her mom I was immediately team mom because it didn't even make sense. I know that on Raven, I, I'd never watched uh, that so Raven, but I remember she did costumes a lot on that for some reason. Mm-hmm. And in this one, she was supposed to leave a note for her mom saying that one of her mom's clients needed a thing. And she, like, okay. halfway through writing the message down, went to some weird Jamaican accent. But you can't write writing. a message in an accent. Her mom was like, oh, how the heck am I supposed to read that message? It's in a Jamaican accent. And I'm like, what is happening? And on top of that, she was like, she was late to like get home and walk the dog. And that's supposed to be like, that's her dog. It's not like her parents' dog. So her mom's like, this is the last time I'm doing your chores for you. And then her dad's like, hey, did you pick up those capers? And she's like, oh, I forgot. And it's just like, she's dropping the ball on being a human. Yeah. And I get the it. Also, girls for it. wouldn't it make more sense for the Cheetah Girls to have a cat as a mascot? Just saying. No, because that dog was hella cute. He was the best part of this movie. He was the best part of the movie. Um, so yeah, I was team mom pretty hardcore immediately. Yeah. Raven was annoying. Her, her mom, and we don't really have much of a backstory on the mom, but it sounded like she had like a, a recording career at some point in her early days, and she made some mistakes by jumping into contracts without really thinking about them. Yeah, it seems like now she's some sort of fashion designer or something. So she's pretty successful and also successful in the arts. Yes. And then we meet uh, Chanel's mom, who's just basically like the cool mom, sharing her daughter's clothes and trying to use the same lingo. Uh, But she's never around because she's dating a French man. I want to show about her life. I feel like I would like this character. I feel like you've been watching too much Real Housewives. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. There we go. Mm-hmm. 
Give me that Chanel's mom TV show. But there was one point when Chanel was like, I don't know what you see in him. And she's like, he's rich. And then, she, <laughs> and then like a beat and she's like, I'm joking. And I was like, you weren't joking. She's not kidding. <laughs> you weren't joking no. at all. <laughs> I think her mom's some sort of model too because she had giant, giant pictures of herself all over the apartment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love her mom. I don't know. <laughs> I do. I really liked her. I really liked all the parents in this so much more. Well, except we never met Aqua's parents. I like how, like, there's a whole storyline about Doe being, like, super secretive about her family life, but we literally know nothing about Aqua's family life. (laughs) I think it was because, like, they really had to set up. So it turns out that Doe, stupid name, um, she's not rich. And not only that, she's a foster kid who lives with a black family. And I don't know if that was like, they had to give her some tragic storyline to explain why the white girl was there, I guess. It seemed really strange to me that they had to do that. And this movie tried big. to deal with so many issues of race. Even when Chanel yeah. was like, you're dating the Italian guy. And she was like, don't call him the Italian guy. And she's like, why? Everybody calls me the Dominican girl. And her mom's like, no, they don't do that. <laughs> When at one point when they're auditioning or whatever for the fashion show, that old lady's like, oh, you were, you're me if I were Latina and blah, blah, blah. And you're me if I was mixed race and blah, blah, blah. And you're Uh me. And she's like, let me guess. If you were white and small, everybody says it. Like, nobody said that this entire movie. (laughs) (laughs) There was a lot of like, I think they were trying, uh, they were definitely trying to go for a diversity thing, but they kind of went a little overboard because... Chanel was supposed to be like at one point her mom was like you're just a mixed bag of all the Latina and she was like you're Dominican Puerto Rican Cuban like you can pick one and that be diverse you don't have to make it all of them yeah they had to make sure they got as many I don't know it was weird I'm all for diverse casting but when it's like this and they make it so like they it was kind of like an um shoot oh right on track Yeah, that one. It was kind of like that, what Sammy and I talked about, where it was kind of like, we get that she's a girl, and that makes it hard, but they tried so hard to make everything about her being a girl. And this one, it was like, they're diverse. It was there. They cast diverse, like a diverse cast. They didn't need to keep mentioning what they all were because it was not relevant, and it wasn't their struggle in this. Well, on that note, what is your favorite race of people? (laughs) I'm just kidding. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. (laughs) Look at the time. <laughs> it's like, what's your favorite cereal? I don't, what? They go to school, and I guess there's a talent show going on, and I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Raven's like, we have to get in this talent show, and we have to win. And I'm like, it's a school talent show. It's a high school talent show. She kept saying that, like, uh, when it came up and they met the producer guy, and, like, when that fell through, she said later that maybe now we'll be able to do the talent show and we'll still get that demo CD. So I feel like maybe the reward for that was some sort of, like, thing. But there wasn't, it wasn't just music at the place. There was that guy, the stand up comedian, who kept making mm-hmm. bird noises, too. So I don't know what the deal was with that. So they were in high school, correct? I feel like they were in middle school, but who knows? Well, they were freshmen, but I thought at the beginning of the movie they were. I thought Aqua was like, I can't. My parents would have never believed I would come to the big city, and get into this school. It said the magnet. I think maybe it was like an art school. Oh, maybe that's why there's like oh. a reward for the uh, talent show. Then my high school, we had a talent show, and it was just a whole bunch of people fucking around on a stage. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to assume that there was a reward for this that was like you get a chunk of change to go and do whatever talent you want to pursue like the comedian maybe would have gotten a gig at a bar or something or maybe not a bar (laughs) (laughs) i guess there's like comedy albums i don't feel like they're not really a thing now but back then i think it would have been a bigger deal there's a blonde boy that raven likes yes uh, his name He's is handsome. Derek. He's the only normal named character in the movie. <laughs> Derek. He really likes to rag on the cheetah girls. I think at one point, like, it, this was totally unrelated. He's just like, we're gonna we're gonna beat you in the talent show. And Raven's like, you know why we're called the cheetah girls? Because the cheetah is the fastest feline in the jungle. And I was like, are you saying you're a bunch of fast girls? <laughs> like, first of all, this is unrelated to anything you guys were talking about. And secondly, <laughs> it makes no sense. 
it, later on, there was a part where she was playing in an auditorium. Like, uh, throughout the whole movie, he's just a giant asshole about the Cheetah Girls. And she's playing the piano, and he walks in. He's like, this is so much better than that pop music. And I hate when people are like, I'm a real musician. I don't like pop music. Because if pop music is something that just, like, materializes on its own and still doesn't take music and writing. Yeah. I was not expecting him to come out and do hip-hop after he had <laughs> ragged on her for her music. Yeah, oh his God. lyrics were like, if you want to party, put your hands up. And then he listed off a bunch of races, and he's like, we're here for everybody. Oh, it was like the whole I have movie it on was video. about, like... Like race inclusion, I guess, and so everybody had to have a say. And like, which one was Drinka? Drinka, Drinka was, was the old. The... <laughs> who was Drinka? Director? Drinka was the talent show host. She was the lady, the like disco diva, who was like, I see myself as a Latina woman. Somehow, Jackal, the music producer, is at their school for some reason. And this was like one of those funny moments where, in the real world, if you're pursuing an artistic endeavor, if you take too long they can be like just kidding we can find other uh, another group of four racially diverse teenage girls that will sign a thing instead they're like you're the one we need these four girls and act like they're super sought after which is funny because like in another part of the movie he's literally like oh we just want you to wear stupid masks like we can put anybody behind them we'll find somebody else well the twist ending was that they did find somebody else twist like but um yeah well we can get to his whole part in a bit but he walks in and he's just slimy looking he's wearing like leather black leather everything like a black leather pair of pants a black leather jacket like a black leather t-shirt he's gross I think looking he took his sunglasses off like six times in one scene he would take them off and then put them back on and take them off and then put them back on he reminded me yeah. of the agent in the spice girls movie where that character was comedic and fun in that context, but in this context was just gross and predatory to these teenage girls. I didn't like seeing him like with his arms around them and they're all like giggling and laughing with him. And it's like, this yeah. is creepy. The mom was very like concerned about them signing the contract and stuff. And she was like, I, I made mistakes in my youth too. And uh, it's th like, she was just super concerned about the predatory nature of this guy. And so it just seemed even extra creepy yes of course these teenage girls should not go to this meeting with this creepy producer on their own that seems troubling well he was an old student of the school so the teacher at the time was like oh i know him he's he was my best student he was a great kid and so i i don't i don't really fault the girls for being like oh we have a sort of close connection to him he went to our school he won the talent contest and now he's a huge deal I can see why he wants to come and help some alumni. Oh, yeah. I totally get, like, I don't blame them at all. Like, that's just the thing is, like, the mom was absolutely right to be like, maybe these teenage girls shouldn't be making decisions like this. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I do blame Raven a little bit. She, like, immediately forgot about her friends. The guy was like, oh, you guys have talent. She's like, I wrote all of it. And I'm the leader of this group. She's, like, super, when she made an album cover later, she was, like, three times bigger than the rest of them. So Chanel's mom is getting hot and heavy with the French man and says they might move to Paris. And Chanel's not stoked on that because she's a cheetah girl and stuff is starting to, like, really be on the up and up with that. So Yeah, basically all of these girls at one point face some obstacle where they're not going to be able to perform with the cheetah girls anymore. Chanel's was that her mom is moving Aqua. to... Except for Aqua, because we literally don't know anything about her. <laughs> her only struggle was that she didn't want to take the subway. <laughs> oh, wait, no, Sammy, don't forget, she couldn't keep her hot sauce. Raven was like, uh, Aqua, this is disgusting, why do you put hot sauce on everything? And Aqua's just like, I'm from Texas, and you guys don't know how to spice your shit. And Raven was just like, I'm taking your hot sauce away. You guys live in yeah. Texas, do you bring hot sauce everywhere you go? No, because everywhere has hot sauce. Yeah, there's no reason to oh, carry it. Oh, jeez. I might move to Texas. I could wear a, a hoop skirt with leopard print. They don't have hoop skirts here. They're outlawed. To get the weed, <laughs> you had to trade in the hoop skirts. <laughs> so Chanel might move to Paris. The other girl... What was funny to me is that they, like, it seemed like they were trying to push this girl band, but then shortly after this, I guess, is when That So Raven started, and Raven was too busy to go on tour or do anything else, and, like... The reason that the show that was supposed to happen for this didn't happen was because after the pilot was filmed, Raven was too busy being Raven to do it, so it got canned. I'm fine with that. I remember the Cheetah Girls being a bigger deal. I remember them having, like, albums, and I felt like 
Were they ever on the radio? I think the Cinderella song was. Cinderella was originally by a band called Play, and that song by Play was on the radio. That's why I remembered it so well, probably. So let me just do a quick old rundown. Basically, this movie was a back and forth between Raven and Raven's parents about whether or not they should be able to record with this slimy guy. And she finally talks her parents into it. Raven and her mom show up at the studio where the rest of the girls are waiting, but Raven had stepped in a pile of dog poo poo and she gets called poop shoe. What'd she get called? Pooper scoop, poop scoop, something. I think it something. was like poop tracker or something like that. Jackal, <laughs> I like I like the order of these notes. Raven steps in dog poop and makes a bad impression. Jackal likes hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Just like right next to each other. <laughs> oh, BT dubs. Oh yeah, that part's funny because Raven's like, you cannot keep bringing hot sauce around. And then she brings it in and Jackal's like, oh, hot sauce is my favorite. You're signed. Which seemed very fake. Where And then like that was the scene where I think like Raven walked in and the rest of the girls were talking to this producer, but they were like standing around him and giggling and just looked really creepy. This was awkward. Raven's mom takes a look at the contract, which they're not like he wants the girls to sign it right then and there, but they're all underage. So that's not legal even a little bit. So even if they had signed it, like big whoop so ma the mom looks through it and like starts xing stuff out and i just thought back to the even stevens movie where they're like yeah let's go on this island sure and like the dad who was a lawyer yeah. literally spent zero seconds figuring out what was going on so i'm like oh already the parent like the people in this i guess are more intelligent that's nice okay this is the part where i want to ask you guys normally we rate that decom dad rate that decom dad oh the dad um i'd say the dad and the mom like raven's parents were fantastic yeah this was 10. probably my favorite favorite decom dad 10 out of 10 10 leopard print shirts out of 10 i cannot tell you a better decom dad that we have experienced yet so and mom she was stellar yeah so let's just do a round of applause <clears throat> <laughs> that'll be entered in later uh chanel's mom finds out that mom put their apartment up for sale and steals her credit card which is really awkwardly sitting on a can in the kitchen no the note said the note said have a blast go shopping Shop for me, too. Oh, so she literally said go shopping and then was later very upset about yes. her going shopping? Yeah. Um. So that's when she ends up trying to go find Doe. And she finds out that Doe lives on the side of the fancy building down the alley and that she has a foster daughter. I'm looking at Dorinda's name and I really want to deep, like, I, I really want to take a deep dive into Dorinda's name. Because it's like a mix between Dorothy and Linda, but it almost sounds like Dorito. And so I'm thinking what other chips might make good names? Frit, Frida. Frida. How about, how about f- Lassie? How about f- Fun Yarn? Funito. That's a boy's name. <laughs> I think that's a word. So, okay. Okay. We get to the good part. Uh, well, they have like this weird moment where like they find out that Doe is a foster kid. It's her and other chick. And like, they cry together, but it's so, they're not crying, and they wipe away tears that aren't there, and it's so awkward. <laughs> and they kept, like, calling attention to the fact, like, oh, look at us, we're crying. And, like, but you're not, though. The acting was subpar. And then she gives her a leopard print, which, okay, just for the record, most of this wasn't cheetah print, most of this was <laughs> leopard print. I'm not, like, full-out phobic of anything, but there are two things that tend to creep me out. Masks, and, like... I can't say the word anamorphosize, anamorphosize, that stuff. So this was just like, hey, Lori, what are your two terrors in life? Let's put them all into one creepy being. So it's a bunch of like, it was weird. There was a really weird sequence of like camera shots and zooms ins and like, it looked like a horror movie. Yeah, there was a part where I think it was just Raven imagining it, but Raven is automatically... So, like, I guess we should explain what's yes. happening. The producer's like, hey, instead of you being the Cheetah Girls and singing the, the shitty pop music that you wrote with shitty lyrics, we want you to sing these other shitty lyrics while wearing animal masks and singing about around the world. And they had, like, animal masks picked specifically, like, oh, this one fits your personality. And What is it? It's like a panda... A cougar, a baby seal. Yeah, it was, it was so like panda, not even it was a panda, a baby seal, and then like a snow tiger or something like that. Yeah, so like not great animals either for like what this is. It was weird. It was weird, and the like yeah. So the scene is like uh, Raven is automatically like no, thank you. This is not something I'm interested in. And then there's this weird sequence what Brandon was talking about, but like 
it's all the other girls getting super hyped and putting on the masks, but it does this weird, like, slow motion trail tripping effect as yes. they put them on and, like, scream. Yeah. Like someone had just dropped acid at a festival. And animal noises are happening that don't match. Like, there's, like, an elephant noise for some reason, even though there's no elephant mask. It was super weird. And it was weird. Like, Raven was like, I'm not. You could tell the girls weren't into it either, but they were like, well, if this is what they want us to do, we'll, we'll give it a shot. And then Raven's like, no, this isn't us and then they all get pissed off at her for making the decision for them that they're not going to do it which i understand is valid but they didn't really want to do it either i feel like the issue over and over and over again was raven literally just had to like give a knowing look to them and then say the stuff instead of saying the stuff and then giving a pissed off look to them Mm -hmm. she was too controlling so everybody the cheetah girls break up i guess um she leaves first all the girls stay so we're kind of led to believe that they're gonna go along with it and then raven i'm just gonna call her raven that's what i've been doing cool raven sees a poster of the all around the girls world girls while raven is entranced with the song her dog kind of just runs away and then falls down a hole (laughs) this was the best part of the movie because like okay (laughs) So the dog runs away, and as she's chasing Toto, she bumps into a cop who is eating imaginary food that he spilled on his face. So he got mad. So you're going to like think that, like, oh, no, he's going to not help her, but he does help her. So they run to this hole, and I don't – it like, didn't seem like a deep hole. I don't ugh. understand the hole. He, he looked at – he goes, a dog in a hole. That's real bad. I'm calling for backup. And he says none of this <laughs> ironically. And then all of a sudden there's sirens, and then there's news stations everywhere. They're like, we're turning off the gas line, we're turning off the power, don't worry, we're pumping oxygen down into the hole. Like, you can get a hole, there's air underground, I've been in tunnels and caves before, like, it's not... No, this was, I mean, this was far-fetched. I mean, I think somebody just gave up. (laughs) I'm serious, I think someone was like, you know what, screw it, let's just make this as weird as possible, because... I'm out of ideas. Anybody? I loved it. I you, loved it. I I literally watched this whole end sequence with a look on my face like I had just smelled a fart. I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. No, I loved it because the rest of it took itself so seriously where they're like, do you know what? We're going to make baller music and cure racism. And then this scene was just like, no, we've realized what we are in the course of making this movie. Yeah. She could have reached down and grabbed the dog out. I don't understand what the hole was. Like, what What was this hole? There's no way there's just, like, a hole to the center of the earth in the middle of New York City. Like, it's got to be just, like, a manhole that, like, somebody's going to have the capability of climbing down and getting the dog and bringing it back up. Like, that's not... I mean, this shut down the city. They said that the city was completely gridlocked. Yes, because yeah. a dog fell down a hole. A dog in a hole? That's bad. And I'm not... I am, like, the world's biggest dog lover. I love dogs. I would gladly shut down a city to save a dog that fell down a hole, but that's not realistic. So all the girls show up, and they just start singing down the hole. Oh, it's it got super dramatic, and, like, the, the fireman who's, like, sitting there, he's like, he's not moving, I can't reach him, you need to come call his name, and which was dumb. And then, like, Raven tried being like, Toto, hey, Toto. And then the dog couldn't hear her. So then she's like, Cheetah Girls, and they all started singing, nothing to do with Toto's name, and he was like, oh, that's my favorite song, I love the Cheetah Girls, I'm so glad they're back together, life is worth living, and then he came to the, to the top of the hole, he just like walked, and he was there, and problem solved. Yep, he yeah, just he right heard his out. favorite song, and it floated him up to the top of the hole. So, well then, Derek brings a guitar to the hole. And plugs it in somewhere. God knows where. Electricity was turned the, off the to the The hole city. has an amp. Oh, yes. Okay, that makes sense. And he just starts, <laughs> just like... magical hole. He just starts, like, this insane guitar solo, which is funny because he's a hip-hop rapper. And then the Cheetah Girls all perform uh, their final song in the middle of the streets. Which somehow counts... They end up winning the fucking talent show, and I would be so mad if I worked hard to do the talent. And what about stand-up guy? He was there from day one rehearsing. These bitches, like, drop out of the talent show, perform in the streets of New York, then win the talent show they didn't perform at? I was so pissed off about that. And Derek seemed fine with it, 
despite being like super competitive about it the whole time if i were him i'd be like yeah. uh, i performed in the talent show they should get it i was hoping okay first of all i wanted to hear the rest of comedy guy is set because he kept doing weird arm flaps and it seemed like he was talking about a dragon i wasn't sure what that was but then also i think it'd be funny if like the cheetah girls were like nah raven you're still a bitch we're gonna keep going without you no we didn't do the creepy animal mask thing but like you're not a cheetah girl anymore and then she learns her lesson yeah done Mm -hmm. oh jackal called and then they all they all told him no they were like we're gonna do it on our own okay we're done i learned that if you have a dog then people will forgive you for anything it's true I have never been, nobody's ever been mad at me in my entire life. I feel like I learned that, I don't know, listen to your parents. You should should carry hot sauce with you everywhere you go. Ooh, I learned that too. Can I steal yours? No. No. I learned, I realized how much I hate cheetah print. Webhead1731 says, this movie was terrible. I was expecting something average because it's Disney Channel, but what I saw blew me away. It was so bad. I cannot understand how it was so well liked by guys or girls. The songs were harsh, the acting was terrible, and there was not a story. Well, there was, but the ending was just the worst part. The dog is stuck in a hole and they can't, or and they get it out by singing? That was bad. I don't understand that. The second one is better, though, he says. Oh, oh no, nice. he says the second one looks no better. <laughs> I'm sorry. One out of ten. Okay. What do you What do you want to rate this movie? I'll give it a six because I like the music, and I didn't hate this movie. The dog in the hole was stupid, but I didn't hate this movie. I'm gonna rate it as two movies. So ninety eight percent of the movie gets a two stars. The plot sucked. The like they were they kept calling attention to how much it sucked like the whole crying thing where they're like look at us crying like babies but there was no tears and that was weird but the dog in the hole sequence and the weird like rap song with the slow motion that was ran like all of the slow motion in this movie looked like somebody was tripping and I give those parts like a seven so, what, so that averages f- out to like probably like a three or a, or a four. four I don't understand numbers. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be four and a half. Okay, I, so I give it a four. I was watching this movie, and I really just hated it a lot. But the songs, the songs, to Sammy's credit, were pretty good. <laughs> yes, thank you. Because she wrote them. them. No, just because <laughs> she's been saying this whole time, you know, the songs were good, I didn't hate this movie. I, I was going to give it a two out of ten, but I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a four. Three out of ten. <laughs> Ooh. All right, guys. Our spots are different. They're different colors. What? Something, uh, I remember. I can't remember the words to the song, so never mind. I quit. I don't want to be no Cinderella without podcast reviews in my dusty cellar. That's legit. So if you'd like to leave us a review, you can find us on iTunes or social media. We've got Facebook. We've got Twitter. There's a Tumblr out there. Try to find I, that. That sounds fun. I, I can't remember the login, so... We have a Tumblr? Yes. Yeah. You guys, listen. Okay, forget everything. Go find us on Tumblr. You, it's not... That's not where good content is. Listen. Uh, most of you're our probably not content anyway. is on uh, Or you can email us at poddingthistogether at gmail.com. We've been getting some fan mail lately. It's pretty cool. We like hearing from you guys, so please do that i mean we do get multiple emails a day like most of them are spam but (laughs) it counts it's an email 